Hello there and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to walk you through step by step how to create a digital escape room using Google Forms just like this. So grab your computer, open it up and get ready to follow along. Before we jump into it, I wanted to let you know, I have a PDF guide with step-by-step -step directions for creating a digital escape room and I'm giving it to you completely free. So if you wanna grab that, use the link in the description box, enter your email, it will be sent to you right away. You can also head over to my website, pocketfullprimary.com, click on freebies and it will take you there as well. I'm gonna show you everything that that guide includes in this video, but if you get stuck or you just find it easier to have visual written directions, that PDF guide is going to be your lifesaver. And again, it is completely free. The other thing I wanna mention is that if at any point during this video, you're like, Michelle, this is just too much. Can I just have a template? please, <laughs> I've got you covered. If you wanna save some time, I have an editable template of the exact escape room I'm gonna show you how to create in this video. It already has all the images included, it has everything linked and formatted and set up, you just have to add in your own questions and answers. I wanted it to be used by any grade level or any subject area, so you have the option to add in your own questions and answers, and the product does include a short tutorial video that will walk you through exactly how to do that. So if at any point it's a little too much and you would rather just buy the template, that will be linked for you in the description box below. But let's jump into the tutorial. Any escape room needs to have a storyline. It needs to be convincing. So for this digital escape room, it's going to be escape the school, okay? You've woken up after falling asleep in class, you are locked inside of the school, and you need to get home before your mom grounds you. So the first step is just to open up a new blank Google Form. You can do that within your Google Drive by clicking New and then Google Forms, or just type in forms.new in your address bar, and it will bring up a blank Google Form. Now we're going to edit the title. So where it says Untitled Form, we're gonna type in Escape the School digital escape room. And it's going to automatically put that at the top of the form as well, but I want to edit this. I'm going to just type in escape the school and I like it to be in all capital letters, but notice that the actual title of the form did not change. The next thing we're going to do is edit some of our settings. So we're going to click on settings at the top. Now I'm going to go through each part of the settings just in case yours may look different. Under responses, I don't make any changes, but depending on what your form defaults are, you may need to adjust things. I do not want it to collect email addresses. I do not want to allow response editing, and I do not need to limit it to one response. I'm going to click the arrow to hide responses, and now I'm going to expand presentation. I do not need it to show the progress bar or shuffle the question order. I'm going to leave those off. I do want to edit the confirmation message, so I'm going to click edit. And this is the message that will be displayed to students once they escape. So I'm gonna say congratulations on escaping the school. Please see your teacher for further instructions. I'm gonna click save. And I want to toggle off show link to submit another response because I don't want them to then do the escape room again. So I just don't even want it to prompt them. And then I'm gonna leave these toggled off as well. Now I can click back to questions. Now I'm gonna set up my theme. So I'm gonna click on the customize theme button. It's the little paint palette. And I'm going to adjust my fonts and font sizes. This is optional, it's totally personal preference. Y'all know I love me some pop-ins. So we're gonna make the header pop-ins black and I'll leave it at size 24. Question, we're gonna make pop-ins semi-bold, and let's go size 14. And then text, we're gonna do pop-ins normal, and let's do size 12. Next, I'm gonna insert a header image. Now, if you have not already seen one of my previous videos where I show you how to use Canva to create custom header images for both Google Classroom and Google Forms, go back and check out that video because I walk you through it step by step. I'm gonna click choose image. I'm going to upload, 
browse, and then I already have all of the images I'm gonna use in this form in one folder. Keep in mind, these images are optional. You can still run the digital escape room without images, they just fancy it up a little bit. So if you are wanting to create your own images, follow that video that I mentioned, it will be linked for you. If you wanna skip the images entirely, that's fine too. If you wanna grab the digital escape room with the images already made, I have the template available in my store. But I have this header right here, and it is actually a GIF. I show you how to create that in the video, but you will notice the little lock just kind of sways back and forth to make it a little bit more interactive. I'm gonna click done, and it's going to place that at the top of my form. And now I can adjust the colors. I really like this kind of light blue color. Okay. That looks good. I can now close out of the theme by clicking the X. So now I'm gonna to start to actually set up the escape room and I need an introduction to kind of introduce the storyline. So under form description, I'm gonna type in the beginning storyline for the escape room. So I'm gonna say, oh no, you fell asleep in class again <laughs> and woke up to find the school empty. You run toward the front doors, but they are already locked. You're going to have to use your best skills to escape the school so you can get home before your mom finds out and grounds you. Now, if I were making this escape room for a specific subject area, such as math, I would probably type in your best math skills, but for this example, I'm just gonna leave it general. Now, I love to kick off my digital escape rooms by giving my students a choice. I always feel like giving my students autonomy in how they navigate the digital escape room makes it more engaging. So I'm going to click down here where I already have a question, and it's gonna be, what is your first move? Now, I'm gonna switch it back over to multiple choice. It switched it to short answer, but I wanna leave it as multiple choice. I'm gonna give my students two choices, although one is clearly the right choice, as they will find out. So option one is going to be, I have a black belt in karate. I can definitely kick one of the windows open. The other option is going to be, I know the front office, keeps a spare key, dot, dot, dot. I want to check there first. Now, as I mentioned, you can add in images to make it a little bit fancier. So we're gonna add an image to this question by clicking the image button right here. We're gonna browse and select these doors with lock. Now, one important note here, I do wanna make sure I require this question, so I'm gonna to toggle that on. Now, I need to set up the Google Form to go in different directions depending on what students choose. So if they choose kicking the door open, that's gonna take them to one section of the form. If they choose the front office, that's gonna take them somewhere else. So I actually need to add in sections. So I'm gonna click this add section button. It's like the two little rectangles. And I'm gonna title them something that makes sense for what's gonna lead them there. So for example, this one, I'm gonna title kick the window open. <laughs> and then I'm gonna add another section and that's going to be front office. So I'm gonna go back to that question I created here. I'm gonna click the three dots and I'm gonna choose go to section based on answer. Now for each of these choices, I can select which section I want it to navigate to. So for black belt and karate, I'm going to have it go to kick the window open. For front office, I'm gonna have it go to front office. So depending on which one they choose, it will direct them to that section of the escape room. Now the kick the window open one is going to be easy because if they choose that, it's not gonna work. So let's go ahead and set up that section. So under kick the window open, we want to add a question. So I'm gonna click the plus sign. And this is where we're going to kind of continue the storyline. So we're gonna say, you raise your foot to kick the left window open, but then you realize that you wouldn't be able to fit through the window anyway. Plus, your mom would definitely ground you if she found out. So their only option is going to be, I guess checking the front office for a key is my best 
chance of getting out of here. Now, once again, we want to require this question and we can add in an image. So I'm going to click the image button and I have this GIF of the foot kind of coming up to kick the door just to make it more interactive. Look how fun that is. Like they go to kick in, it's like, no, that's not going to work. Now we want to make sure that once they finish this question, it takes them to the front office because they've realized that's their only choice. So you will notice after section two, it says continue to next section, which the front office is the next section. So that's good. But personally, I like to switch it to like the specific name of the section, just in case I reorder sections at any point. So now whether they choose either option, they're going to end up in the front office. So we're going to come down to front office. And we're going to build the storyline a little bit more. So I'm going to have a series of images. I'm going to click to add an image. So I don't need a question attached, just an image. And we're going to have kind of this image of the front office being to the left of the front doors. And we're going to continue the storyline. You turn to the left and walk toward the front office door, but notice another lock. And I'm going to unbold this because I want only the questions that they have to answer to be bolded. That's just a personal preference. Okay, we're going to add another image. So just like before, this time it's going to be with the lock. Okay, we'll turn off bolding. You try tugging on the combination lock, but it won't budge. Ugh. <laughs> You will need to figure out the combination for the lock and fast. Now I'm going to insert in some kind of a task for them to complete. So I'm going to insert in a question this time and let's go ahead and start out the storyline. You flip over the combination lock and find a message with directions on how to open it on the back. And now I'm going to type whatever the task is going to be. So I might say spin the dial to spell the answer to this question. What part of speech is the underlined word? in this sentence and we'll do the dog ran un I misspelled sentence. <laughs> what else is new under the car to hide from these strangers. Okay. Let's unbold this part. We're going to leave this bolded. We'll make that italicized and let's do dog. This is just an example. You can make the task, whatever you want it to be, but Instead of multiple choice, I want this to be short answer. Let's go ahead and insert in my image. Just get that out of the way. Okay, so this is going to be the close up of the lock. So I want my students to have to type in the answer, which the answer to this is noun. And I want the escape room to only accept the word noun. So what I'm going to do is first require the question. I'm going to click the three dots and I'm going to choose response validation. Now it's going to default to number, which if your answer is a number, you can use number. I'll show you that on a future task. But if it's going to be text, we're going to switch it over to text. We can leave this as contains and we're going to type in the correct answer here. Now keep in mind, this is case sensitive. So if I type it in lowercase, my students need to type it in lowercase. If I type it in uppercase, they need to type it in uppercase. The custom error text is the message that will display when students type in an incorrect answer. So this is a good place to give them a clue. So we're going to say type the, well, actually, no, let's say, sorry, that's incorrect type the answer in lowercase letters with no spaces. Now do not leave the custom error text blank. If you leave the custom error text blank, it will actually reveal the answer to your student. So make sure you type something there, even if it's just that's wrong. <laughs> you got to have something there really quick. I just want to show you as you're creating your digital escape room, it is helpful to use the preview button to test things along the way. So let's go ahead and click the preview button. It's the little eye icon up at the top. And we're just going to take a look at our form so far. So we have escape the school. What's your first move? Let's test out. I want to kick the window. I'm going to select that click next. Okay. It brought me to that kick the window open section. And now my only option is to go to the front office. So I'm going to click here, choose next. 
Now I'm in the front office, I notice the lock, I tug, it doesn't work, I flip it over and I need to type in the answer. So really quick, just to show you, if I type in an incorrect answer like verb and click submit, it's not gonna allow me to continue and it displays that custom error text. Let's try typing noun in all capital letters just to show you that that will not work either. If I click submit, still not accepted, but if I type in noun in lowercase, it is going to accept it and we need to continue the escape room. So let's go back. Now I need to add another section. So we're gonna now be inside of the front office. Let's add a section and this is gonna be front desk. So I'm gonna go ahead and name that. Again, I can leave this as continue to next section or I can have it specifically say front desk just in case I move things around. So now let's go ahead and insert in an image and let's have that front desk. All right, let's turn off bold. You spin the dial on the combination lock and here a clip, you found the correct combination. You walk into the front office and see the front desk. Now, once again, I like to give my students choices. This is optional. It's making it more complicated than it needs to be, but I just wanna show you how this works. I wanna allow my students to choose their next task. They will end up completing both, but I wanna give them a little bit of autonomy. So I'm gonna insert in a question and it's gonna say, where do you want to look first? And their options are going to be the desk or the corkboard. So once again, I can add in either one big image or I can add in an image for each question answer option. So next to desk, if I hover over it, I can click that image, click browse, and I have an image of just a desk. And I can do the same thing for corkboard. So hover over it, click image, browse, and insert in the corkboard. So once again, I wanna require the question and just like I did at the beginning, I'm gonna have it navigate to different sections depending on which answer is selected. So I'm gonna click the three dots and choose go to section based on answer, but I need to create those sections. So let's go ahead and click add section. This is going to be the desk and we're gonna add another section that will be the cork board. So I'm gonna come back up to this question. If they choose desk, it's gonna take them to desk. If they choose corkboard, it's gonna take them to corkboard. I can leave this as continue to next section because it doesn't matter. It's going to navigate them depending on which answer they choose. So now I can go ahead and set up my desk task. So once again, let's start by adding in just an image. We're gonna have like a close up of the computer. Turn off bold. You walk toward the desk and decide the computer is the best place to start. Now I want to add the question. So insert question. Let's go ahead and add that image. So I have this animated one of the computer like turning on with a strange message appearing. Once again, these images were all just made in Canva. So now, for my question, it's gonna say, you press the power button on the computer and it turns on. After a few seconds of loading, a strange message appears. All right, so I'm gonna say the message tells you to type in the answer to the following question. And I'm just gonna use a very basic math problem. So let's do like one plus one equals question mark. <laughs> now keep in mind, with these examples, I'm showing you just one question and answer per task, but a task can actually be multiple questions. In the template, I actually have examples of ways that you can have them create codes with the answers. So maybe it's a series of multiple choice questions and they take the letters and make a code, or there's multiple math problems and they take the numbers and create a code. There are a bunch of different ways that you can create digital escape room tasks. Maybe I'll have to do a future video all about that. But for now, just as an example to show you how to set up that response validation for a number, we're gonna come down and we, oh, we need to switch this over to short answer. Okay, now we're gonna come down. I'm going to require the question, click the three dots, response validation. We're gonna leave it on number, but we wanna switch greater than to equal to, and we're gonna type the answer here. So number two, and once again, custom error text, do not leave it blank. I might say, sorry, that's incorrect. The answer is a number 
with no spaces. If they get that correct, we now want it to navigate them to a screen that says, great, you got the right answer, but you still gotta go to the corkboard. So we're going to add in another section and this section is going to be computer. So I'm gonna come back up here. If they get this correct, I want it to take them to the computer. And then under computer, let's go ahead and set up. We're gonna have it type on the keyboard. Okay, you use the keyboard to type the code into the computer. I'm gonna unbold that. Now I'm gonna add another image and this time it's gonna be with the computer message. So this is going to say the code worked, a message appears on the computer screen. And then it's gonna tell them to check the top desk drawer, but the top desk drawer is going to be locked. They're gonna to have to go to the cork board to get the key. So we're gonna add in a question and it's gonna say, you try to open the desk drawer, but it doesn't but it looks like you will need a key to open it. And it's gonna say, check the cork board for another clue. We want to require it. Now, I'm gonna jump around a little bit, but try to stay with me. So the original choices were desk or cork board. If they chose desk, it took them there. Once they solve that task, they realize they have to go to the cork board. But if they chose cork board first, we need to set up that task, which is the section we have at the very bottom for cork board. So we're gonna go ahead and insert in an image and it's just gonna be a close up of the cork board. And we're gonna say you walk toward the cork board and notice one of the notes has writing on it. Then we're going to insert in a question and we can switch this over to short answer. Let's insert in that image. So the note is gonna fall off on the floor. Okay, so our question is going to be, as you walk closer to the cork board, the note with writing falls off. You pick it up and read the following. So type the code into the phone on the desk. And once again, this would be where I would insert in my task and it can be anything I want. Just as an example, what is two plus two? <laughs> Question mark. Let's italicize this and unbold. So once again, we're gonna set up the response validation, require it. And because it is a number, we can switch this to equal to and the answer is four. Sorry, that's incorrect. The answer is a number with no spaces. So if they get this correct, it's gonna lead them to the next section, which is going to be the phone. And we can insert in an image of the phone and it's gonna like dial. You use the phone to call the number from the note and say the code once the call connects. Actually, so I want them to say, okay. So instead of type the phone, let's say call this number and say the code. Okay, okay. Call this number using the phone on the desk and tell the, or no, and say the code. Say the ants, say the, <laughs> say the code when the line connects. Okay, that's fine. And we wanna make sure that this goes to the phone. Okay, we're gonna add another image and it's going to be the cork board. Once again, it's going to say a voice on the other end of the call tells you to check behind the card on the cork board that has no tape holding it up, which is gonna be this one right here. We're gonna insert a question and let's go ahead and insert the image of that with the key. So just like with the desk, if they choose the cork board first, we want them to still have to go back and do that other task. So under the question, it's going to say, you pick up the card and find a key taped on the back. You pick up the key, but don't know what to do with it. So they're gonna only have one option and it's gonna say, check the desk for another clue. And once again, we want to require it. 
Now, here's where it gets a little bit complicated because we're gonna duplicate some of these sections, okay? Hear me out. I now need basically two desks and two cork boards because I need the one where if they go to it first and the one where they go to it second. So I'm gonna come back up to where the desk is. I'm going to duplicate the section, okay? And I'm going to just call this desk two to kind of keep track of it. So this is if they come to it after the cork board. So I'm gonna come down to after the cork board. Let's go ahead and add a section, okay? This will be like in the desk drawer. So once they get to the desk drawer, okay. Instead of continuing to the next section, I want it to go to desk two. So they have to like go back and do the desk task. The good news is this desk task is already set up. So I labeled it desk two. They're gonna do the task exactly as is, but I need another computer section, so computer two. We're gonna duplicate. We're gonna call it computer two. And so if they come from desk two, so this is desk two, it's going to navigate them instead of computer. I want it to take them to computer two. And then under computer two, this time they've already been to the cork board, so they have both parts. So instead of check the cork board for another clue, it's gonna say use the key from the cork board. And once they use that key, it's gonna unlock the desk drawer so they can go to the desk drawer section. Now I need to create duplicate cork boards and telephones. So we're gonna duplicate this section. We're gonna call it cork board two. We can leave the rest of it as is. We're gonna duplicate the phone. We're gonna call it phone to, we want to link cork board to, to phone to, and then under phone to, we want it to navigate to, instead of desk to, it's going to go to the desk drawer. Okay, so real quick, let's preview, make sure that this works. Spare key, noun, y'all are probably thinking I'm so crazy at this point. Desk to, Computer, check the cork board, yes. Go to the cork board, type in the answer. Phone, use it to unlock the desk drawer. And now we're at the desk drawer. Okay, now I'm gonna continue the same process just to add additional tasks. I'm gonna try to keep this quick. Um, I'm gonna just speed it up a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing, but I'm not gonna narrate all of it. <laughs> Okay, so I have finished the escape room. I'm gonna go ahead and click the preview button just to show you what it would look like. So I already showed you at the beginning how to set up to give students options, although it doesn't matter which one they choose because it will still make them go to the front office. But if they do choose kicking the window open, then it only gives them one option, which is to go to the front office. They click next. From the front office, they notice a lock. They try tugging on it. It doesn't work. They flip it over and they have to solve that first task, which the correct answer to that was next. 
down, click next. Once they are at the front desk, they have two different choices. So the desk or the cork board. If they choose desk, we're gonna click next. A message appears on the computer, gives them the task to solve. Once they type in the correct answer, they will get the correct code, but the drawer is locked. So they still have to go to the cork board. Once they are at the cork board, they notice a note. That note gives them their task. When they type in the correct answer, they will put it into the phone, tell the voice the code, and it tells them which card to check for the key. They get the key, they use it to unlock the desk drawer. So these are now all the parts that I just added in. So once they unlock the desk drawer, it's a little bit messy. They move the folders out of the way. They find a small lock box. They try to open it, but nothing happens. They flip it over, notice a note, and that gives them their next task. So the answer to this one is six. But once again, if I type in the wrong answer, it will not let me continue. Once I type in six, click next. I spin the dial, hear a click, it opens up and there's a gold key. So I'm going to run back to the front doors of the school, click next. I get there and try the key on the lock. It fits the lock and chain removed from the doors. But at the last second, I notice an alarm that will definitely go off. So I need to disarm it. I press a button on the alarm. A message appears. It gives me a problem to solve. If I type in eight, which is the correct answer, click next. And now it has disarmed the alarm and I can run home. It's dark, but I'm pretty sure I can make it run home as fast as you can submit. And now I have escaped. <laughs> so just to give you an overview of those sections, I'm going to click here and just choose move section. So I had a total of 16 sections. I had the escape the school, which was the intro, kicking the window open, front office. Once I get inside, they're at the front desk. And then I have desk and desk two, computer, computer two, Corkboard, corkboard to phone, phone to. Again, you do not have to make it that complicated. You can make it more like that ending where one task just leads to the next instead of offering choices. But from there, they had the desk drawer, the lockbox, the front doors, and then congratulations, you escaped. I know that that was a lot, but keep in mind, as I said, I do have a step-by-step -step guide that will walk you through and it's completely free. So you can grab that using the link in the description box. And I have this as an editable text template. I have all of the questions and answers up at the top of the form. So all you have to do is go in, add in your questions, add in your answers, and the rest of it is already set up for you. So if this was overwhelming and you want to save some time, you can purchase that pre-made template. And I do plan on creating some other ones moving forward. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you do not miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.